So I'm gonna give one more chance to this Jiffy Flats and I'm gonna use all these seeds that I got from a neighbor I was so kind to offer them and so I'm gonna do um, maybe six of each so one for each and then I'm gonna use these yogurt labels that I made and I'm gonna put the names and hopefully they will sprout and if they do then I'll find a spot for it because right now I don't know where I'm gonna put it I'm thinking I have a spot but I have to finish the garden bed so instead of waiting for that I am going to start them here and over the weekend work on you know the final destination So this is what it looks like it's so funny because like some of them have quite a few Swiss chard lettuce these other letters nothing nasturtiums are growing I actually want to transplant them no dill no rosemary oregano is doing great the opal basil is doing great uh, this is cilantro nothing zinnias and then this one's spinach. Back here, I have the sunflowers that sprouted. The green bean right here. And there's another one sprouting there and another one here. And then this, I can't remember what it was. I have a few peas and jalapeno peppers. And then on the other one in the back, it's funny because only the surprise or the, the flowers that I don't know what they are, are the ones sprouting. So I guess I'm going to find out. That one that I labeled surprise, that other one that I labeled mystery, and 20 inches. They're all sprouting. The rest, like the gazania, which is a beautiful flower, nothing, no poppies, no milkweed. So we'll see. And then here I just dumped over there the soil because after a while it gets depleted. All that needs to come out this weekend. But anyways, I'm gonna try to do bunching onions here, the entire tray, and then wait for them to be kind of big before I transplant them. I started them in the bed and it didn't work. These ones need to be transplanted. Some of them are Roma tomatoes. Well, all of them are Roma tomatoes. And then here I have oregano. Those are some small peppers that nothing sprouted. And this is the basil, the opal basil. So I got this. That is my favorite seed starting that potting mix I buy at Walmart I think it's ten dollars and this is super light and I love it so I'm gonna fill things up and try to transplant and do things as much as I can This is the um, onions I want to put on that flat. I have to say 
that if you haven't been lucky starting seeds these flats their styrofoam flats are the best ones that i've tried they're hydroponic so you have to have water underneath but everything i put there sprouted unless it was eaten by a bug or something and in the other ones the regular ones um not so much so i'm gonna do the evergreen hardy white bunching this is how local nursery and um they said that they stay year round so since it didn't they didn't sprout on the garden bed i am going to try to grow them here i'm gonna do the whole flat because i really want to have lots of bunching onions a lot of people wonder why do you bother going through the heartache of starting seeds not sprouting you know pests and stuff like that but not as of recently I think after 2020 we realized that we're very dependable on a system that it can fail because it's a system human made system so it can definitely fail and that's why I feel like I need to do this for myself because I find it very important to see how it works, to experiment and, and try different things and learn what it works and what it doesn't and then have that knowledge because yeah I know I can go to a store and I can you know get a bunch of onions for 99 cents it's not a lot but it's more about the knowledge it's more about learning it's more about self-sufficiency and not because I'm afraid that something is gonna happen although it can happen but it's more like I want to be ready and I want to eat my own food I want to know where it's coming from. I want to know that if I'm gonna eat chicken, I want to know that it was raised humanely. And that, you know, lots of things that we ignore when we go to a store and buy your chicken breast for 99 cents a pound. There's a lot you don't know about that food that ends up in your stomach. So to me, growing a garden, it, yeah, it you know sometimes can be heartbreaking when things don't work out like this onions. But in the end, it's all about knowledge. It's all about what I learn after trying. And I think that if you believe that you already know everything, um, I think you're in big trouble. So I don't know if really is smart or if it's a money saver to have your own garden. I really don't have the answer to that after this is going to be my second season gardening. So I can't really tell you if it be a good investment money wise. All I know is I moved here and I got property because this is what I wanted to do. I'm sure you can buy food cheaper than I can grow it. And that's okay. Maybe you're not interested in the, you know, money side of things, but if you are, just so you know, sometimes really it's not about the numbers, but it's about what you want to do, what makes you happy, and how you can learn skills while you're doing what you want to do.
other people ask me, why do you put, you know, 200 or whatever big number for your seeds? And the truth is that this year I started over, I don't even know, 200 seeds. Like different, in all the different uh, varieties, probably 200 seeds of tomatoes. And I got 10 plants. Uh, I don't think it was human error. I think it was more like slugs had a great time. Roly polies too, as they were sprouting. But if I didn't put down three dollars in seeds or whatever math I did for that, I don't think I would have gotten any Roma tomato plants. And that's really what I wanted this year. I wanted to can my own tomato products. So I am happy with 10 plants. Even if it took 200 or however many hundreds of seeds I started. Now I am terrified of transplanting these tomatoes because I feel like they're doing great there, but they do need to get better and stronger root systems. So what I'm going to do is try to help it by burying the stem as much as I can because all those little hairs that you see there can become roots you could be smarter than me and bury it deeper or you can add more soil and I cut those first two leaves. Those are the ones that sprout first, but these are the true leaves. As you can see, this is what sprouted and this is what they look like. So, there we have it. And I'm gonna keep going.